It's time for Agriculture, presented by Tricana Farms in Germantown, New York, a small-scale producer of heritage breed livestock and a wide array of vegetables and berries on just over 39 acres. They also produce a full array of garden vegetables, many of them heirloom varieties raised naturally, as well as an assortment of berries, including raspberries, blackberries, gooseberries, black, red, and white currants, mulberries, and elderberries. And now, here's Mark Scherzer. When I tell people I have a farm and they ask where it is, I describe its location in the broadest geographic terms, the Hudson Valley. When I ultimately invite them to visit and direct them how to come to the farm, I of course have to get more specific. I direct them to drive up Hog Trough Road and take a left onto our road where they enter Germantown. They are inevitably charmed by both the road onto which I've directed them with its bucolic view of a valley dotted with barns and cows, which appears to sweep all the way over to the Catskills. And by its name, to them, the term Hudson Valley conjures farms, like the ones they buy from at their local city green markets, and the hog trough road confirms that this is, indeed, the deep country, someplace people, someplace somebody is raising pigs. It goes without saying that Hudson Valley, despite its association with agriculture and weekend homes in the minds of New Yorkers, is really a geological term. It refers to the large depression formed between the hard-rocked Catskill Mountains and the next hard-rocked ridges to the east, the Taconics and the Berkshires, as glaciers advanced and receded over the softer sedimentary rocks like shale in the area between them in the last ice age. But it often surprises people that hog trough is a geological term as well. A ridge of rock, which is steep at one end and tapers off at the other, is often referred to as a hog back because of its resemblance to the back of a razor-backed pig. The depression alongside it is called a hog trough. The Hudson Valley is full of such ridges and depressions. It's part of what geologists call the Ridge and Valley Province. The resulting topography has determined a great deal. The Palatine family that built our house situated it on a ridge of shale, undoubtedly both for the stability it provides and because it's better to build there than to take up precious areas of good agricultural soils for such purposes. According to Walter Miller's History of 18th Century Germantown, when the land was purchased from the Livingstons in the early 18th century to establish this town, it was placed here quite deliberately despite having poorer agricultural soils than some other areas, not to oppress the Palatines or impoverish them, but because it was on the river and near ample stands of pine trees that grow in poorer soils, which it was expected the Palatines would use to manufacture pine tar. When we first moved in, we mined a large section of the shale ridge behind the house to obtain the shale for the driveways. When we hit a ridge of rock which looked like it would require blasting, my late partner Peter told the contractor to leave it where it was. He made it the base of a rock garden, where the succulents he planted could work their way into crevices. The collage of massed yellows, blues, and pinks against the gray of the stone outcropping provides a spectacular shifting floral kaleidoscope through the spring. Sometimes, though, we cannot work with the topography, but rather must work against it. As we continue our project of bringing electricity to the barn, I've been spending a few hours each day digging the 18-inch deep trench that needs to connect from the main box in the house to the barn. A good part of the distance is easy digging in deep topsoil. We have scheduled a rental of a trenching machine to try to make short work of those segments. Portions, however, go under fences, or our holly hedge, or, most significantly, near or through that shale ridge. We've been trying to do those portions by hand. In the shale areas, we are concerned about damaging the machine we rent. It is this process that has led me to contemplate the fundamentals of our local geology. We plan the route of the trench to cross the shortest possible stretch of shale. As I dig, I realize that 18 inches is deeper than it might seem, and our topsoil in many areas is quite shallow. And as I try to break up the shale with my shovel, I realize that shale, though theoretically a soft, sedimentary rock, is harder than it might seem. But I'm coming to know the rock. Because it is formed from silt and other sediments, shale does flake into fragments, and it's removable that way. But that work often proceeds just centimeters at a time, Digging through jumbles of small pieces of rock is hard and slow. A large flat piece of shale, parallel to the surface, though, is my nightmare. 
Sometimes with a pry bar and sledgehammer, I can open up seams in that seemingly impervious sheet. And often the placement is not flat. Even though the shale was undoubtedly formed flat as sediments were deposited on top of each other, the collision of continents that formed this area's fundamental geological structure and some of the upheaval associated with later glacial activity means that one often finds the sheets of stone deposited vertically or at an angle. And this means I can use a pry bar alone to get under the stone, lever it up, and sometimes remove three to four inches of stone in one scoop. Very satisfying. But I think about how hard it must have been for the Palatines in 1709 to dig in the half-basement rooms that were their original first homes, like the one which became our underground kitchen. I understand why one corner of our basement floor is still a rock outcropping. If I say that digging the trench is a metaphor for life, some wise-ass friend may say, yes, because operating this farm is like digging your own grave. But I would view the metaphor a bit differently. The trenching process reveals that there are bedrock truths we cannot ignore. It shows that in perseverance, sometimes requiring thousands of tiny steps and gestures, there can be progress. And I see that by chipping away at the edges from every angle, I can sometimes reveal the overall contours of that rock I'm trying to remove and pave the way for its removal. I feel like these are important messages House Intelligence Chair Committee Chairman Adam Schiff must have absorbed somewhere along the way. In the impeachment hearings, he keeps chipping away, little by little, revealing the bedrock truth. Eventually, I feel, he will shake loose and move what now seems an impervious rock of American opinion. Agriculture is underwritten by Chicana Farms, LLC, a small-scale producer of heritage-bred livestock and a wide array of vegetables and berries on just over 39 acres in Germantown, New York. More information, 518-537-3815.